Hello and welcome to the Revisiting Archive, the channel where we explore the fascinating events of the past. This is the fourth video in our series on Spanish history, and today we are going to talk about the Islamic conquest and Al-Andalus that lasted from 711 CE to 1492 CE. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new videos. Also, if you enjoy our content, please give us a like and share with your friends. Thank you for your support. Now, let's dive into the history of Al-Andalus, the name used by the Muslim population of the Iberian Peninsula for the territory that was under Muslim rule for almost 8 centuries. The Islamic conquest of Spain began in 711 CE when the Muslim army led by Tariq ibn Ziyad crossed the Strait of Gibraltar and defeated the Visigothic king Roderick at the Battle of Guadalete. This opened the way for further Muslim invasions, which soon conquered most of Spain and Portugal with little resistance. The Muslims established the Umayyad Caliphate in the Iberian Peninsula, which they called Al-Andalus, meaning the land of the Vandals, a Germanic tribe that had occupied the region in the 5th century. The Umayyad Caliphate was one of the largest and most powerful empires in history, stretching from Spain to India at its peak. It was also a center of culture, science, and art, where Muslims, Christians, and Jews coexisted in relative harmony and tolerance. The Umayyads built magnificent cities, mosques, palaces, and gardens in Al-Andalus, such as Cordoba, Seville, Granada, and Toledo. They also promoted learning and scholarship in various fields, such as astronomy, medicine, mathematics, philosophy, literature, and poetry. One of the most famous rulers of Al-Andalus was Abd al-Rahman III, who declared himself caliph in 929 CE and made Cordoba his capital. He was a patron of culture and learning, and under his reign, Cordoba became one of the most prosperous and civilized cities in the world, and had a population of over half a million people, many libraries, schools, hospitals, markets, and public baths. It also had a great mosque known as the Mesquita, which is still one of the most impressive monuments of Islamic architecture. However, the Umayyad Caliphate also faced many challenges and conflicts from within and without. It had to deal with rebellions from different ethnic and religious groups, such as the Berbers, who were the original inhabitants of North Africa and Spain, the Muladi, who were Muslims of Hispanic origin, and the Mozarabs, who were Christians who adopted Arabic culture but kept their faith. It also had to face external threats from rival Muslim dynasties, such as the Fatimids in North Africa and Egypt, the Abbasids in Iraq and Persia, and the Seljuks in Anatolia and Syria. The Umayyad Caliphate collapsed in 1031 CE, due to internal divisions and civil wars. Al-Andalus was then divided into small kingdoms known as Taifas, which were often at war with each other. This weakened their defense against the Christian kingdoms in the north of Spain. The fragmentation of Al-Andalus into Taifas made it vulnerable to the growing power of the Christian kingdoms in the north, such as Castile, Aragon, and Leon. These Christian states saw the disunity among the Muslims as an opportunity to reclaim territory that had been lost during the Islamic conquest. The Reconquista, a series of military campaigns and battles, marked the effort by Christian forces to regain control over the Iberian Peninsula. During the 11th and 12th centuries, the Christian kingdoms gradually pushed southward, capturing major cities like Toledo, Valencia, and Seville. This slow but steady advance led to the eventual fall of the Taifa kingdoms one by one, as they were absorbed into the Christian realms. One of the significant turning points in the history of Al-Andalus was the capture of Toledo in 1085 by King Alfonso VI of Castile. This event significantly altered the battle of power and demonstrated the resolute determination of the Christian forces. The capture of Toledo also had cultural implications, as it brought Christians into direct contact with the advanced Islamic culture that had flourished in the region for centuries. Amidst this complex backdrop, a remarkable kingdom emerged in the southern part of Al-Andalus, the Nasrid Kingdom of Granada. The Nasrid dynasty managed to survive for several centuries due to a combination of diplomacy, alliances, and a relatively strong military. The Nasrid rulers established the stunning Alhambra Palace complex, which stands as a testament to the architectural and artistic achievements of the Islamic Spain. However, by the late 15th century, the pressure on Granada intensified, the marriage of Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, along with their military campaigns, paved the way for the final chapter in the history of Al-Andalus, the last Muslim stronghold. The Emirate of Granada fell in 1492 after a long siege, 
marking the end of Islamic rule in the Iberian Peninsula. The conquest of Granada led to significant changes, including the expulsion of Jews and Muslims from Spain during the Spanish Inquisition. This marked the end of the coexistence and cultural exchange that had characterized Al-Andalus for centuries. In conclusion, the history of Islamic conquest and Al-Andalus in Spain is a complex and multifaceted narrative that spans nearly eight centuries. It encompasses the rise and fall of empires, the exchange of ideas and cultures, and the clashes between different faiths and civilizations. Al-Andalus remains a testament to the potential for coexistence and the influence of diverse cultures in shaping the course of history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of Al-Andalus. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might be interested. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more explorations of historical topics. This is a revisiting archive. Until next time.